Hi guys, it's Crystal. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a super cute DIY Christmas pillow using uh, the Cricut Maker. We're going to be using uh, wool. The white is felt because I didn't have any white wool. Um, and this is the Riley Blake co uh, collection. I got it from Missouri Star Quilt Company. And you can get it in the 5x5 or the 10x10. And let me go ahead and this is a live video in case you're watching it back. Let me go check my quality here. Just pulling this up. Okay, looks like everything's good. Okay, so we're using the, um, I actually was able to use the five by five squares and these are by Riley Blake and I got them from Missouri Star Quilt Company. So I actually use this one. This is the lights collection and these are about $9 and something on Missouri Star. And then these are the darks. And then I also have the 10 by 10 packs. So if you were making something bigger, you guys could have a 10 by 10. And um, let's see. And then I'm using that leftover canvas that I had, but you could use whatever fabric you wanted to. Hi, Guadalupe. Thank you for being here today. So we are making a DIY Christmas pillow. So I'm using that extra canvas that I have. So this is 100% cotton. And then these pieces are wool, like I said, from the Riley Blake wool collection. But the white is felt because I didn't have white. Um, hi, Denise. Um, and then I cut out uh, the glitter from Parsby. This is that glitter vinyl, and I did two different tones here. So we're going to iron these on, and then I'm going to take some heat and bond, but I got the sewable kind, and I'm going to go ahead and put it on the back of my penguin, and then we're going to stitch all the way around all the rest of the pieces. And I'm actually going to use a lapel stick that I got from Missouri Star to hold these little pieces down. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to move, um, and I actually, I cut these pieces of canvas that I have, but you could use any type of fabric. Um, I cut these 12 and a half, you could do as big as you wanted to. I did these 12 and a half, because I didn't use my Cricut Maker, <laughs> I keep going back and forth. 12 and a half by 12 and a half. That gateway gives me a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. So I already got my two pieces cut out and ironed for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and move, let me go ahead and get my temperature going. So on our little reference guide here, for 100%, um, where did I find it, cotton canvas, for glitter, it says 270 for 40 seconds. So we're on a different temperature this time. So let's see, let me go ahead and get that going and it's gonna be 270 this time for 40 seconds. So this is gonna be interesting because it's different. All right, so let me go ahead and get my temperature going. Okay, so 270 for 40 seconds on 100% canvas, 100% cotton canvas. So we're gonna get these ironed up and I already have them uh, where I want them. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move this little guy out of the way. Isn't he just adorable? These are on Cricut Design Space and they were both free. So uh, this was Winter Joy, it was all together. Um, but I, um, how, what did you, uh, detached it. That way I could change the color of Joy. Either that or it was a different color, I can't remember. But I did detach my penguin so I could change the color because he actually has a red hat and a red um, scarf, but I wanted it to be blue to go with this. So we're almost there, we're at 150. And then I'm gonna show you guys how I'm going to stitch this together. But I'm super excited, I think this looks adorable. And I actually have the Winter Joy more in the middle here, kinda of even, but then I kinda of liked it a little bit slanted, so that's what I did. But it cut out perfectly. I do recommend when you go into Design Space um, and you detach him, go to the um, contour and I'll have to walk you guys through that. And there's like some little lines that it wants to cut because if it was paper, you want to go through and actually um, take those out and contour. And I'll show you what I mean here in a little bit. But see, if you don't do that, you're going to have these cuts like this because it would think that it's paper. So I actually should have did that. I did that on the white before it came out. So there's that. We are at 255. We're almost there. And I'm going to go ahead and scoot this down just a little bit. So this will be interesting because this is a different time for temperature. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go 40 seconds. So I've got this all lined up here. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of pressure. And we're going to see how it's going to turn out. Let me go ahead while we're here. I'm going to go ahead and make sure my volume is all the way up. Oh, I never hit go. So I'll probably stop it about five seconds beforehand. I think I do that all the time. Okay, so did you guys have uh, good morning, Terry? Um, I am from Arkansas here. Okay, did you guys uh, try to score that mystery box on Cricut? Did anybody have any problems? 
Um, I actually got one, and I'm actually thinking since everybody had problems, if you weren't able to get it, I might give mine away in a giveaway. Because I've seen so many people have problems. So, I think I'm going to do a giveaway with it. So, as soon as I get it, I'll do an unboxing, and we'll decide then. But I've seen so many people have problems. Mine, I grabbed it right off the bat, so I really didn't have issues. Okay, so let's see how that worked out. That came out really good. Okay, so that was perfect. So that was 270 for 40 seconds on 100% canvas. Um, hi, I want to say your name, but I know I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to attempt it. Destefs. Is it Destefs? Okay. So now what we're going to do, so we're making our cute little uh, Christmas pillow here. So the next step that I'm going to go ahead and do, I've decided I'm going to take some heat and bond. And if you're just joining us, the only thing that we've done is I have these, um, the canvas cut out in 12 and a half squares. You can use regular if you want to. And let's see. Um, so the 12 and a half squares, so that way you have the uh, seam allowance. And then I just ironed this on. That's all I've done so far. Okay. So let's go ahead and we're going to take our um, heat and bond here. So this is going to be interesting. So we're going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple pins and I know this is upside down so bear with me. So uh, we're going to just pin him down in a couple spots here and then I'm going to go ahead and trim around this. I don't want to use my fabric scissors. Okay so let's go ahead and trim around this little guy. Because, so Like I said I want to go ahead and get my main piece ironed down just so it won't move it all on me and then we'll sew down each of the which we're going to sew this piece down but we'll sew down the rest of them so I'm just cutting out my little kind of just rough cutting here there we go um did you guys check out the uh Black Friday ad for Walmart this morning I did not see any cr uh cricket deals and normally there always is with Walmart so I'm kind of curious if maybe it's just going to be Michaels and Joann's this year. I also looked at Target and it wasn't in Target either. Which I don't think Target carries it, but I'm not too sure. Okay. So you didn't try for me, so I don't blame you. Yeah, that it was a hot mess over that uh, Cricut box. But I guess everybody was so excited over that little Cricut uh, critter. Which is super adorable, but I was like, oh my goodness. But, you know... Um, but like I said, I got it right away. So if we, if you guys, if any of my people had a hard time, I'm going to do a giveaway. So that way you guys can have a chance to get one. Because I already have all that stuff. Um, I just thought, what the heck, I'll try for the little critter. But it may mean something more to somebody else. Okay. So let's see. I'm almost done cutting out this little guy. And like I said, I'm just going to rough cut in there. I think I need to trim around his little... Maybe his arm just moved a little bit. I'm, I can always come back after I get this stuff ironed on if I need to. So I'm just rough cutting. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this. And I'm going to use my easy press because somebody had asked that before. So I'm going to show you that you can use your easy press. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, since it's just here in handy, like I said, whatever's convenient. I'm going to put this face down. But I'm going to take a piece of scrap fabric, like I said before, because I don't want to gum up my iron. And then we're just going to kind of get this on here a little bit. I'm just kind of getting that to stick. Let's check that and see if that was good enough. Okay, I think we're pretty good. So let me see if I can't. So that seems pretty good. So there we go. So there we go. So we're going to have our little heat and bond. And what I'm going to do is any of that little stuff I can kind of see. Kind of peeking out the bottoms here. I'm going to try that away. Okay. So that was with the easy press. Now let's go ahead and get him on here. First up, we're going to get our little guy. Now I want to go ahead and make sure he's where he needs to be. So let me check his hat. And remember when you put these in place, remember you need your seam allowance. So you're actually going to lose... One fourth inch seam allowance, so you want to make sure that it's not going to butt up against when you're sewing. So I want to just make sure his little hat's not going to be in the way of anything. I think that'll be good. 
So I'm going to just move everything else and go ahead and I'm going to put down my scrap, scrap fabric again. All right. And I'm just going to hold this down for a few seconds, just trying to get it to bond. Oh, did you try too long? Yeah, um, I, it was crazy. So you didn't end up getting one? Um, from what I've heard, too, is I think whenever they, um, I guess they get this all cleared up, they're going to come back and stock whatever was remaining. And um, I just feel bad for the people that it was like, you know, charged like five times. That's awful. But at least, I mean, they're getting their crickets fixing it right away. So that's awesome. And I'm really kind of curious. I'm like, what are they doing for Black Friday? Yeah, I don't blame you. Because so, like I said, I'll probably just go ahead and do mine in a giveaway. So that way you guys can have a shot at getting one. So, because I didn't need, and I sat there and contemplated for just a second. And the only thing I had when I went to check out, I think that's where it was first starting to um, have issues. Uh, my my thing was just spinning and spinning and spinning and then um, I refreshed the page and it went white and then um, I checked my banking account and it did come out and I checked my thing and it said it was there so I left it alone. Okay, so now that's on there. Now like I said, this is the sewable heat and bond so you need to make sure don't do the one that's hard to sew through. Okay, so the next step, I'm actually going to use my lapel stick and I forgot one thing. Hold on. I knew I was going to forget one thing. Okay, so I'm going to use my Sue Daily just to help me hold these pieces in place while I stick them on here. So, which actually, no, I'm not since I already, well, just to help hold it down while I glue is what I was going to do. Okay, couldn't remember what my plan was. This little board just kind of helps, which you can just use a piece of sandpaper. That's all it basically is. It just helps hold your felt in place or your wool while you're putting the glue on. So this is a lapel stick from... Missouri Star Quilt Company, and it just helps glue your uh, fabric down. So it's a little handy little thing. All right. So we're going to go ahead and line this little guy up right here. Looks good to me. I'm going to press that down so it can stick. Okay, next piece is, I think I'm going to go ahead and put his shoes and his little nose on. So I want to make sure that everybody's facing the right directions. That looks good. So I'm just going to get some of this glue on here. Just to kind of hold it down while I'm stitching it so it don't move. You could also just pin it. So, let's see. I believe his nose went, so that's his little mouth. So I think his nose went down. Let me peek at this one more time. I have my design space still open, so let me see. Yes. But maybe it went right over his mouth. That's what it is. So that cut line's where I, I guess I left a cut line. I should have removed that one. So I'm going to put this down here. So there's that. And then we're going to take his little feet. And they actually go this way. And let me actually scoot him up so you guys can see him a little better. See so me putting on his little feet and stuff. So there we go. So there's his little feet. He's coming together. All right, the next step is his little scarf. And the scarf's going to go this way. So I want to flip it over and get a little bit on his scarf. Yeah, this little lapel stick, I think it's like three bucks, two or three bucks. It's super cheap. And it really is a helpful little tool. Okay. And I tried to look at Hobby Lobby to see if they had a brand, but I hadn't seen any. Okay, there we go. And then we're going to do our hat. So I'm gonna separate these two pieces and they need to be upside down. So we're gonna go ahead and, like I said, the white parts are felt, not wool, because I did not have a white piece of wool. It was kind of like an off-white and I didn't wanna do that, so. And I'm gonna put his hat maybe like right in here. Let me go double check. Okay, it was actually right on top is where they have theirs, but I'm putting mine a little offset. So I'm going to move my iron because it's, it wants to go to sleep. 
I don't think I need it anymore, but I'm going to keep it awake for just another second or two. Okay. So, just in case. Okay, so we got our last piece ready here. And, there we go. So, super cute. Now all that we have left is to stitch around it. And then we're going to put it together. And you also need some type of stuffing. So I have my polyfill. I have that. I've had that bag of that stuff last forever. Okay, I just threw my poly. My little pill stick. Okay, so let me see. I want to make sure you guys can see the best way you can while I'm sewing. So let me figure out how I'm going to do that really quick. Let's see. I was thinking about... Let me see, I think I'm going to move this little guy. So let me go ahead and move this over here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that iron off. I think we are done with it. I'm gonna move this out of the way because we're done with it basically. Our little steady buddy. Okay. Now let me I think I'm gonna bring my sewing machine up in here so that way it'd be easier to do. Let's see. Let me try to do it this way. And I'll come on this side to make sure you guys can see everything. Okay, now let me kinda move this down. Let's see if we can't kinda move it like that. I think this will be a lot easier for you guys to see. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I wanna use a zigzag stitch. Let me get my little pedal down here. And let me turn my computer around so I can see you guys. All right. Uh, hi, Amanda. I meant to text you first and tell you I went live, but I wasn't sure if you were watching. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna stitch around is, I'm kinda of thinking about stitching around the Winter Joy. I'm not too sure, so maybe I should wait for that. But I think I'm gonna do a zigzag stitch. So I'm gonna start with his outside first. So let me go ahead and get him here. I'm gonna change my stitch to a zigzag. And I wanna say it's this one here. And actually, to be smart, let's test a piece first to make sure it's the one I want. That's always wise to do. So, let's... Now, let me lift this up. That'll be good. Okay. So there's our test stitch. That'll be good enough. Okay. So here we go. See how good that lapel stick it sticks? It's really good. Okay. And I kind of wonder if you could use a glue stick. I'm not too sure. I'm going to go ahead and start like right in here. Drop my foot. And let me move my... So I can work a lot easier. Here we go. All right, so I think you guys can see this a little better. So let me make sure that I'm over enough. All right. We're going to test it out. Yeah, that looks good. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure to make sure the stitch goes on both sides. There is a red line right in the center of this foot, and I'm just keeping the edge of my fabric butted up against that. And I'm going to go ahead and drop my needle too. That way when I turn, it'll be easier. All right, so here we go. I'm just going nice and easy. Turn a little bit. Stop, turn. Oop, so see I was way over here, but that's all right. Let me bring it back. Let's see. Okay, I've got off just a little bit, so I'm just picking my, make sure that blue gets under there, lift back up. All right, turn. We're gonna turn back. So this right here is gonna be a little bit of a slow process, unless you're like a super pro. you don't want to rush it 
All right. And I'm using a white thread because I wanted it to pop. Okay, I kind of got off there a little bit, but that's all right. Once again, like I say, it's always all right. It's no big deal. All right, let me come back around. Whoop, gotta make sure our little shoe gets under there. All right, we're over halfway around the outside. So we're getting somewhere. All right. Here we go. Let's see. there again I'm pretty sure so let me and I probably sound really loud because I'm right here by the phone make sure and get him under there returning it's funny because I keep sitting here thinking I don't remember gluing down that his top of his hat because he's part of the underneath go ahead and do my fixed stitch and maybe reverse it just to make sure all right now let me go ahead and trim it I want to see what it's looking like okay so that's what he's looking like so let's see where I got off my lighting is kind of a little bad right here but you can see I got that stitched all the way around. See, I kind of got off a little bit right here. And but other than that, he's looking pretty good. I got off a little bit right here. That's where I kind of came out a little bit. I can always come back and put a few stitches there to make it look good. So now all we have left is to go around the white in the inside. I'm going to actually come around this outside piece right here really quick. And then we'll go around the white, his nose, and his shoes. Let's see. Let me go ahead and let's do this big white first. So we're gonna start right here. Okay, let's bring it around this way.
Let's just go backwards this time. Looks good. I'm gonna cut it. Looking pretty cute. Okay, so now the next one, we're just going to finish off his little white piece around his hat. So we're going to bring it. All right, let's reverse it. There we go, and cut. All right, so there is the top of his hat. Where's the lighting? Because this is my phone's just blocking it. Okay, so the last pieces we have, I'm gonna go ahead and zigzag around his little scarf here, and then his little nose. So maybe I should do his little nose first. All right. So let's drop our foot. Turn it. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the stitch, the fix this time. It. So there is his nose. All right, let's see. I'm thinking about stitching around his eyes in that same way, so let's go ahead and do that really quick. All right. Let's see. I don't know. Maybe I should just do. I'm going to leave that for a second. I got to think what I want to do with his eyes. Okay. So down. Now we're doing a scarf. And we're going to turn him. Turn him. Oh, I definitely agree, Guadalupe. I'm really enjoying that. Thank you, Denise. Uh, thank you, Guadalupe. But yes, definitely, like, that's what I was laying there the other night thinking, like, it's so cool to think of all the possibilities. It's, and I was sitting there thinking last night, like, I wonder if Cricut's going to come out with their own sewing machine, you know? But I really, I really am enjoying combining the two. And I'm just going to do my fix again. All right, trim it. All right, so there is his little scarf. And let's do his little feet. And his feet don't have, because one side's already done, so it's just the tops of his feet. So we're gonna drop that. I'm gonna hit the fix button. trim it go on to the other one all right let's see we're gonna drop it I can't wait to start applicating with some of these too with uh, embroidery the designs on these it'd be really cute Okay, let's trim it. And I think the last thing I have is his eyes. I'm trying to decide, should I stitch around his little eyes or should I leave them? Or should I maybe do a straight stitch around his eyes? What do you guys think? While I trim these little pieces, his little strings. 
Okay. Oh, we still have, actually, I've got a little piece while we think about that. I do have this little piece here. So you guys let me know. Should I leave his eyes alone? Should I straight stitch it? Should I zigzag? All right, let's drop this down. Leave it. Okay, I agree. Okay. So now let me trim this. There we go. Super cute. Okay, maybe a center stitch to make an eyeball. Yes, I love that. Okay, so let's do that really quick. So let's see if I can get it right in the center. Let me drop my needle so I can see where I'm at. Let me see. Nope, let me pick it up. Pick my needle up. Oh, pick my hair up too. Drop my needle. Okay, let's see, let's maybe do this. again okay let me up this I'm all over the place and I didn't trim that let me look and see what we did I may made more of a mess let me trim my thread here I kind of got off to the side a little bit but it's okay Okay, so I just gotta take some small scissors here in a second and snip this last little thread, but there's that. That does look a lot better. Okay, so good idea. All right, let's, let's see. Yes, definitely agree. Thank you guys so much. Okay, so let's see. Let me make sure I'm pretty centered here. Let's drop it. Drop our needle. Okay, so let's do the fixed stitch. Reverse. Oop, one too many. That's all right. Trim this away. All right. Actually, made this eye a little bit too big. So let me go back and grab my little seam ripper wherever I stuck it and just take out that one side. Okay. Let me do that really quick. And we're going to leave that one. So, I'm going to take my scissors and get that clipped away. There we go. Now let me see if I can't maybe go ahead and clip this side. Let's see what I need to do. There we go. Clip. Okay. So, there we go. So there's that. Okay, so I think I got everybody stitched. Let me trim this one. And I think I'm going to just leave the um, Winter and Joy away, but you can stitch around that because I have done that already on a quilt. So there we go. So now we're gonna go ahead and work on the next part. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna leave my sewing machine like that so you guys can see. What did I do? Here it is, right? What did I do with that other side? Yeah, this is it. Okay. So what I'm going to take is my other piece, and I'm going to take this one, and we're going to put them right sides together. And we're going to go ahead and start stitching around it with a 1 4 inch seam allowance, and then we're going to leave a gap, and then we're going to stuff it. I must have got off here a little bit too whenever I was cutting. All right, so I'm just going to start here. 
and I'm back on a straight stitch so we're gonna go ahead and start going here And actually, I did way less than a one fourth inch. It is not my day, so hold on. Let me undo that. Up all the way. Okay, hold on. Let me take that out. I was too far in. Easy fix. And like I said, guys, this uh, Cricut um, seam ripper is like a champ. But I guess they all are whenever they are fresh, huh? but it's definitely a good one. So I'm just kind of pulling these out really quick. So I definitely want to make sure my seam allowance is right. I don't want to have one wonky side. All right, we are ha over halfway there. And keep going, going. And we are almost done with this project. All right. Um, tomorrow night, uh, we're gonna have my daughter's her birthday's um November twenty second, and it always like lands like right by Thanksgiving or on Thanksgiving. So we're gonna have her birthday party with her friends tomorrow. And we made her birthday uh, invitations. I'll have to post them on my Facebook. They were nar little narwhals. And um, we are going to, I actually got her a sewing machine for her birthday. Um, and I'll show you guys that. I'll do that on a, we'll do an unboxing of that. I bought hers from Walmart. It's the Singer, I think, 333, I think 3337. So anyways, we got her that. We got her a little mini iron. And... Um, then I'm going to go ahead and get stuff already cut out and prepared so her friends can um, make shirts for her party. Okay, let's see. Let's see. I uh, think your grandkids would love to rip it out. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes. Okay. And all right, so let's go ahead. Let me trim this little piece off where it's got a little knot from where it knotted. All right. So, yeah, I'll have to show you. Miranda, go give me that little quilt thing that she quilted the other day. She, this is the first time she's ever used a sewing machine. She self-taught herself to hand sew, um, and she's going to be 13 years old. Anyways, I let her use my sewing machine when she was at home sick the other day, and I joke you not, this is what she made. So give me just a second. I'm going to show you. She, Miranda's going to go get it. She's homesick today. It's the season for flu stuff, I think. All right. She's got asthma really bad, so. All right, so here we go. I'm going to do the... This time I'm going to do it correctly, one fourth inch seam allowance, and here we go. So I'm just holding it in place, you can pin it off. Everybody's lining up good. There we go. Look on her bed or in her closet. She probably has in her backpack. Now I overcut here, so I have this extra here, but that's where I had was off on my cutting. So just ignore that. Set it down right there. Okay, so I'm gonna sew, and then I'm gonna leave this little spot over here. I'm gonna leave a little spot on this side. So, I should have actually started like in the middle here, but that's okay. 
You could add like a little homemade tag in here that says homemade or whatever. Okay, so I'll be back, stitch a few stitches. All right, and cut. Okay. So before I flip this around, let me show you. This is what she made. This is the first time she's ever sewn with a sewing machine, and this is what she made. The only thing is, whenever she had done it, it was kind of wonky, and um, I just trimmed out the outside to make like a complete square, but look at this. Is that not cute? I mean, that's crazy. She made her little dolls like a, um, a little uh, blanket, but she was actually gonna make it for my mom. My mom's a huge rock collector, and she was gonna make it for my mom to set her rocks on, and um, then she was like, I wanna keep it as my first one. But I'm like, oh my God, she's like super talented. So um, I got her so much in, so she's gonna be super excited. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this inside out, and I actually have these little sticks that came with my, um, it comes with your polyfill, so you can stick these inside out. Thank you so much, guys. But I'm like, is it just me as a mom? And I'm just like, oh my God. But I was like, wow, God, child. And I mean, she sewed with a sewing machine like she's done it her whole life. Like she wasn't slow. She wasn't like super fast. She was perfect. Like her speed with her foot pedal and everything. It was like the craziest thing I've ever seen. So I'm just kind of pushing this out here. And I probably should have clipped my corners so that way they came out a little cleaner. But it's all right, as usual. All right. So, just pushing this out with my hand. But like I said, your bag of polyfill does come with sticks inside, your little poker sticks. So, there we go. Now, you could always take this over to the sewing machine, I mean to the sewing machine, to the um, iron, and iron this down a little better. I know, same here. It did me too. It took me a while to not be so scared of it. And even my sister that's watching right now, like she's like so freaked out. And so my daughter, she's like, I'll charge her to make a quilt. <laughs> but yeah, she, uh, I mean, it did me too. My biggest fear of sewing was um, that I was either A, the needle would break, which I've done now several times, so it's not so scary. Or I was afraid that, um, so let me go ahead and get the stuffing. Um... Or it's always like afraid that like it would break off and then um, you know like get in my eye or something like I'm to the extreme or it would like I would sew my finger that's what I do all the time I don't know if you guys do it like you're sewing and I don't know how I even do it but like my finger gets caught up underneath this like so it comes back and hits me oh it scares me to death <laughs> but I've broke several needles so far and they just kind of break in there and it's not so scary as I thought it would be so let me while we stuff this really quick I'm just gonna Scoot this back so you guys can see what I'm doing. So here we go. So we're just stuffing our pillow. And like I said, you could um, iron this out to make it a little better. So we're just stuffing this little guy. So. So there we go. We're just going to keep stuffing this. I'm going to get it down on those corners first. I'm just getting this all the way down to the corners. I just love how this is turning out. I was wanting to make one for fall for you guys because I was wanting to use the wool and stuff and I just didn't have enough time. So I sat here and played with it and thought I'll do a Christmas one. Let's see. We're just stuffing, stuffing, stuffing. Oh my gosh, you did get a needle went through your uh, finger. Oh gosh. I'm telling you, I'm scared. Was it really bad? Did you have to, did you get the, um, did you have to like lift the uh, foot up and everything to get the needle out? Or was it where it just kind of came down and went through? Okay. So we're just stuffing this as much as you want to stuff it. And I'm just evening, evening, even, evening. Okay, I got a little bit left, so I'm just gonna stuff it in here. All right, so we're just making sure everybody's even and not wonky. So I think that looks good. What do you guys think? Isn't that cute? And like I said, you could always stitch around these because it looks really cute. Let me see. I think I showed you guys before, but let me show you again. Okay, 
making a mess. Okay, I have like a huge mess working on like all these Christmas quilts and everything. It's a disaster. I want to show y'all really quick what it would look like if y'all stitch around the vinyl. Because I did that before. Alright. So this is what it would look like if you stitch around with the uh, zigzag stitch. Let me see if you guys can see that really good. Can y'all see the zigzags? And it comes out really cute. So I did that. Let me show y'all really quick too before I get since I'm already here. Um, two things I want to show you guys really quick before I finish this. So this is the quilt I'm currently working on. And I'm going to show you guys how to bring this into the design space. You guys won't be able to see it all, obviously, because the way my camera is. This is a twin size, twin or a full size bed. And it looks like this. So it has the, um, why can I not think of this? But anyways, it makes it look like the string. So it's like a, um, a banner. So it's super cute. So that's what I'm working on right now. I've already got that, the whole fronts done. And then I want to show you this. My aunt went to a yard sale the other day. This is king size, but I'm going to show you it's bow ties. So my aunt called me from a yard sale and she said, do you want this quilt? She's like, it's got this design and it's like all these different colors, but it's some lady, um, put this whole thing together and just never finished it. And, um, it's really pretty. So that's just kind of some of the colors there. Let me see. It's kind of hard cause it's huge. But anyways, it's all these bow ties. So the whole front is finished. It just needs um, batting and the back. She got it for three dollars. So I'm gonna finish it off. So whoever's that was, I'm sure is they're gonna be proud that it was finished. Okay. So here we go. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to just carefully let's see if you guys can see this. I'm just gonna carefully kind of bend these in, and then I'm just going to um, stitch down it. Either that or maybe I should, let me see. Let me try to figure out what I'm doing here. So I'll probably pin and I'm just gonna run, yeah, I'm just gonna run a little. I wanna make sure this is, I'm getting this good. Okay, let me get my pins over here. All right, so I'm just going to pin these off. So I can come back and just seal this up. So I'm just folding these down really good. Making sure I'm catching all the edging. And you want to bend them in about the 1 4 inch seam allowance. So that way it all stays the same. Let's see. Hopefully you guys can kind of see this somewhat. And let's see here. Bend this down. Get another one right in here. And you could also use your Wonder Clips at this point. I should have brought those in here. But we're already past it, so too late. That would have been a lot easier to mess with. But I'm already almost there, so it's all right. All right. So let me go ahead and tuck back in my last piece here. All right. There we go. There we go. So, what I'm gonna do is come over here. Let's see. Um, okay, let me see, let me go back real quick. Yes, I bet it was, oh my gosh. Yes, I bet you, I, I bet you learned your lesson as a kid. You definitely won't do it now. Let's see, I love the glitter. Thank you so much. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Guadalupe. Um, Laura, let's see, future hint. Um, have opening on the bottom easier to hide sewing mistakes at the closure that's what I was thinking too that's what I was thinking definitely want to do it more like what are you like here in the center oh yes I have it on the side I wasn't even thinking okay yep you're definitely correct so you definitely want to hide it down here on the bottom where I'm actually having it up here on the side I wasn't even thinking there so definitely pay attention to that just like Laura said you want to make sure it's down here so let's see I'm like oh my gosh Okay, thank you so much for that, Laura. Okay, so let's scoot the sewing machine back up. Let's make sure we're where we need to be. Okay, I think that's good enough. All right, so what we're gonna do is very carefully get this underneath here. Get our first point. 
and I'm going to, well, you need to come as close as you can to the edge to hold that down. So I'm going to go in the middle line here. Let me drop my foot. All right, I'm going to drop my needle just so it holds it for me. And let's go ahead and get that going. So this is not you I'm probably not the best person to show you guys closing stuff off because it's probably gonna be a hot mess but you usually want to try to do this by hand too so that way you can't really you can get those inside stitches let's see let's reverse it just a couple stitches all right let's see what that's gonna look like there we go so, so see, now you're going to have that right there on the side, like she was saying. So either I could come back all the way around and stitch it around so that way it kind of matches. So let me show you what I'm talking about there. So that way it kind of all, let's see if we can't achieve that. Let's see if we can't achieve it. All right. Well, let me think here for a minute. I'm going to actually start up at the corner. Let me roll this out. You are super welcome. Okay, so let me, and I'll probably do that off camera so that way we don't take so long. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come on the outside all the way around and stitch like this. That way now I can hide that. But definitely, like she said, Laura said, you want to do it down here at the bottom so that way it hides it. And you really, if you can, do it by hand so that way you can hide your stitches and stuff and have it more on the inside. But I'm just going to go carefully all the way around and make that as my little outside look. So there it is. So let me... Move my sewing machine really quick so you guys can see the final look here. Okay. There we go. So let me bring my camera and see if maybe it can't help with the lighting a little bit. Okay. So there we go. There it is. Super cute. So there's the penguin. And like I said, that is the Riley Blake, um, Riley Blake wool. And it comes in... Sorry if I saw it far away. I'm trying to grab this. Okay, so it comes in these five five inch squares. So this is your your light colors, and this is your dark. And I got mine from Missouri Star Quilt Company. I'll leave the link down below. And you can also get them in ten by ten. That way, if you want to do a bigger piece, um, or you could use whatever wool that you want to. Um, but this was actually the perfect size for these. So like I said, I did not have the white wool though, because this is what color the wool was. So I really didn't want to do that. So I just, this is actually felt. So you could actually do all of this felt, whatever you want to do. You could do different color fabrics. Um, you are super welcome, Laura. Let's see, I'm gonna, what, uh, border around the edges, let's see. Yes, like what if I'd put you, like I put a border around the edges, what do you mean? Let's see, well, this, you, it's, you guys are super welcome. Um, what if I put a border? Are you talking about like this right here? So where I'm going to actually just stitch all the way around and I'll have to trim these up. But um, you could actually, when you flip it, um, like right sides together, you could actually pin um, like a ruffle. So like ribbon or something like that on the inside here. And you could actually have like a ruffly look all the way around as well. Um, and then there was something else I was going to say with the pillow too. Um, another thing is, I think it's called wonder. What is it? It's like wonder iron stuff or whatever. So it's like a, a little adhesive strip that you can actually put inside here and you can iron it shut as well. So that's another thing. Let's see. You guys are super welcome. Yes. You could actually come around and do like a whole border and stuff all the way around if that's something that you wanted to do. So there it is. And like I said, I cut my squares 12 and a 12 and a half that way they had a quarter quarter inch seam allowance all the way around and then just filled it with polyfill but i hope you guys enjoyed this and um, i hope you guys found it helpful if you did as usual hit the subscribe button down below and the like button and i will see you guys on the next one thank you guys so much for being here with me um yes definitely guadalupe um, and Guadalupe, I also went to those groups and stuff too, so I'll have to look for you. I added myself to those, so it took me like a day, I think, to get accepted. So I'll have to check you out on there. And yes, I think these would be cute for, um, for Christmas gifts too, yes. So I want to make, since I'm making the quilts, maybe do some little matching pillows or something like that. That would be cute.
But uh, I hope you guys found this inspiring and hopefully you guys can recreate this. And like I said, these are, okay, hold on. Looky here. I just found a mistake. Okay, right here on this E, there is a little center circle and right here in these areas that you need to, that I need to come back, that I needed to pull out and also on this. So make sure when you're weeding that you're paying attention. Let me also show you what happened first. So let me show you everybody makes mistakes. And so let me show you what happened. So when I first cut out my uh, handy dandy vinyl, I did not reverse it. So this is what happens when you don't mirror it. You would have it like this. So definitely, so I have a whole piece here. I figure what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these for test for testing on scrap fabric. So I'll just save these for those. Don't throw them away, always save those. Um, you are so welcome. So I will see you guys. I hope you guys found this helpful again and um, I will see you guys on the next one.